The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. Hello and welcome to another episode of A History of U.S. Navy in 100 Objects. Many people have had the experience of walking out of a crowded, sprawling, urban shopping mall, only to realize that they have neglected to remember where they parked. Had they done so, often they would have remembered a grid system, such as a number like Red Lot 4B, that allows them to zero in on their approximate position. Using this as a model, think of the size of the Pacific Ocean and the problem of how to identify your location on such a huge body of water. Until the advent of the global positioning system, navigation relied heavily on a tool called a sextant in order to identify position. Using time, angular sightings of the moon, sun, and Polaris the North Star, as well as other basic calculations, sailors in the US Navy could pinpoint their location with surprising accuracy. By using this instrument and taking sightings on these various celestial bodies, sailors could track intercept times, estimate distances, and figure out where the next supply line was. The development of satellite technology and the global positioning system has resulted in the gradual phasing out of the sextant as a tool of daily use. However, they are still carried on Navy ships today, just in case. If all of the high technology the Navy relies on fails, the sextant which has been used by every great mariner from John Paul Jones to Perry to Nathaniel Bowditch and well into the 20th century, will still be a reliable benchmark of navigation. For our object today, we reach back into the War of 1812 and take a look at a sextant on display in the Naval Academy Museum. We look at its story, as well as a marvelous display of chivalry. We take you now into the Naval Academy Museum, where we're joined by Dr. Scott Harmon, director of the Naval Academy Museum. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Scott Harmon, and we are here in the Naval Academy Museum, and uh, right now we want to look at a sextant. And this is a very important sextant, one of the nicest things in our collection. Uh, right here you see it. Uh, it's a very finely worked piece of uh, equipment. Uh, it's brass, it's showing its age a little bit, but this has a very great historical connection because it was initially owned by the British commander of the Naval Squadron on Lake Erie during the War of 1812, and he gave it to the American commander after the American victory on Lake Erie in uh, September of 1812. Now, this was a very important battle in American naval history. The core, the seat of the war uh, was in the Northwest, what was called the Northwest, the areas of Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio. And the British uh, going into the war wanted to maintain that territory as a homeland for the Indians, the Native Americans. The Americans, however, were moving to the West. They wanted that fertile part of land uh, for expansion of the U.S. So, uh, the Battle of Lake Erie came about because the British had uh, army troops in Detroit, they had uh, Indian allies, and these all had to be fed and supplied, and the only way to get them food and supplies was by shipping that uh, material across Lake Erie uh, to Detroit. The American mission was to cut that supply line which uh, in September of 1813, uh, the Battle of Lake Erie, uh, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry defeated the British squadron under the command of Robert Harriet Barclay. Uh, this led to uh, Perry's famous statement to uh, his commanding officer uh, that we have met the enemy and they are ours. Well, in many of these naval battles, there are many casualties and those casualties on both sides were taken by uh, Perry to South Bass Island in Lake Erie. A hospital was created and treated the British casualties as well as the American casualties. And uh, as a gesture of his uh, thankfulness uh, in this, Robert Barclay gave his personal sextant to Oliver Hazard Perry. So both commanders uh, actually possessed this sextant. The outcome of the battle was that the British could no longer threaten the Northwest. They were forced to retreat, 
and the Americans, when the end of the war came, were able to maintain possession of the Northwest. It was open for American settlement after that. Thank you for joining us in this series of podcasts featuring 100 objects from the Naval Academy Museum. We hope that you enjoy it and hope that you will pay us future visits for these podcasts. And also, if you may, join us at the museum itself where you can see these objects in person. We next go to Mr. Thomas Cutler, award-winning author of many works of naval history and of naval science. Periodically, Mr. Cutler will be joining us on the podcast series to provide historical perspective on objects as well as practical knowledge on how they actually worked. Today, he joins us for the first time to explain just how a sextant was used to get sailors to their destinations and home again. And in that light, we will conclude our episode with the Naval Academy Men's Glee Club and a classic sailor song about the longing to return home. What we have here is the GPS of yesteryear. This is the uh, a sextant, most people would recognize that, uh, even though they're not used that much anymore. It's still a very recognizable part of navigation. Um, the, uh, the sextant is a very precise instrument, but at the same, and very complicated in many ways, but it's also a very simple instrument in that all you're really doing is measuring angles with this. It's a very sophisticated way of uh, getting a precise uh, measurement of an angle. What we do is we go out at sea and depending on what time of the day, at around noontime you can do a sun sight and use the sextant to uh, get a, a line of position that way. Or at twilight, uh, you can, when you can see both the, the horizon and the stars, uh, they're visible enough, then you can get a, uh, some lines of position that way. What happens is that uh, you find out, identify stars first of all, which ones are out there, which ones are visible. And then you go out and you use this device here to, by swinging this arc while you're taking a, um, a visual sighting, you bring that star down to the horizon. And there's a split mirror and uh, window here that allows you to see both the horizon and the reflected star. The star is reflected in a series of mirrors that, that uh, get it through the, the telescope so you can see what you're doing. Once you've got it down on the horizon, you, you fine-tune so it's right, right on the horizon. Then you take your reading, and then you go punch the pubs. When I say punch the pubs, what I'm talking about is that the principle of sextant navigation is really spherical trigonometry. Well, not everybody can do that, but almost anybody can, as we say, punch a pub. There are vast tables are, are arranged in, uh, uh, provided for navigators that really do the mathematics for them. You take that angle, you pu uh, put it into this publication, you get a reading that will eventually lead you to a chart and it will give you a line, a line of position, what we call an LOP. Once you've got a line of position, you know you're somewhere along that line, but that's all you know. So if you go take another reading and get a different star, hopefully at a much different, better angle, you'll wind up with another line of position. Where those two lines cross, adjusted for time because of the difference in uh, uh, when you take your sightings and so forth, that'll tell you where you are, where the intersection of those lines are. Again, I say two lines, ideally you would have three, four, five, however many you can get to fine tune that position and get a much better idea of where you are. Uh, sextants are not used as much as they used to be because they've been replaced by GPS satellites which are very accurate, don't require pub punching and that sort of thing but they also are, are vulnerable in certain ways. Uh, one of the key things about a sextant is you've got to keep it um, accurate, and the only way to do that is make constant adjustments. Even with that, one of the calculations that goes into your line of position is sextant error. You can figure out what the error is that's built into your, your sextant and apply that as well. Um, it, again, very reliable, uh, a little bit complicated, but uh, an absolutely essential part of early navigation.